Hi there, and welcome to the ECM Podcast. I'm Friedrich Kunzmann, and I'm excited to be hosting this newest episode of the podcast and take you behind the scenes of new music on ECM Records. Today I'm joined by the Polish alto saxophonist Maciej Urbara, whose third release with his Polish-Norwegian quartet of Dominik Wania on piano, Ole Martin Vogan on bass, and Gard Nielsen on drums is called Frozen Silence. It is perhaps the group's strongest musical statement to date, and demonstrates alert interactivity in a program of all-new Obara compositions inspired by the starkly dramatic landscapes of southwestern Poland. Maciej talks about the different voices and colors his bandmates bring to the group, and about the various influences from free jazz musicians like Bill Dixon to classical composers like Rachmaninoff that informed the writing process of the music for the new album. Maciej, thank you so much for joining me in the podcast. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'd like to get right to it and speak about your new album, Frozen Silence. More than on your previous efforts, I feel that the structures on Frozen Silence feel more open, leaving you and your musical partners more space and freedom for some of the most out there improvising you've documented on record to date. Was that an objective of yours from the start for this album? To compose in a way that leaves you more space for freewheeling interplay? It's, I have to say that's it's been a general idea having really open music in this group but uh, i have to say that's like composing it's the thing i never plan i'm just doing this spontaneously and uh, when i feel there was a good moment to do this i just jump in and spend some few weeks trying to put the whole ideas uh, all together yeah and the question about the uh, like openness of music it's a uh, very special to me because it's a good question when the music is open and it's not the only like technical aspect of the notation uh, or whatever creating the forms progression chords progression and all that stuff it's like technical aspect but you can have some music without a form we can call it it's open but for me music is open when you are ready to get something different than you expect because of the musicians yeah. you have in a group. So it's about the headspace. Totally. And you have when you have like such a strong personality as I have uh, uh, mentioned about uh, Dominic, uh, and Gard, you have to be ready for that, to get this inspiration, and you have to be ready to any kind of contribution they give. And this is the sense of openness in the music. Uh, and you might you might have a, like a structured music very like in the sense like in the form but when you have a very personal point of others and you're able to share it then probably the music is open whatever it is mm. and i feel that that happens over and over again on this album you really you're able to give your colleagues who you've been playing with for such a long time now so much space and it really gels it really comes together and i think i was comparing it in my head with something like on your last album you had um the the first track three pieces in old style you had um little requiem for a polish girl these these tracks seem more through composed in a way and maybe left a little less room they there was a different nature to that music and here you're really you're you really you really take you you really you really make use of that space but i have to say it's that's really good point because uh, lyrical aspects of new album at some point are more interesting i think like the the melodies and the harmonizations and all that all that stuff like the tension and intensity in the air of this music is very unique and the, there's very brilliant interplay uh, in the group and you can feel the nice progress so it's been like 11 years together and I think it's a kind of fantastic moment 
to let's say capture the the sound of the group and the real friendship and real understanding what's happening with the music when we share some ideas together and it yeah. actually luckily it happened in the studio which is difficult and the live concerts might be a little bit easier just to um, find ourselves to this uh, idea but i'm happy we were able to make it in oslo in rainbow yeah and like you said you've been supported by these same colleagues for over a decade now um meanwhile gart nielsen has released his own leader date on ecm with his acoustic unity trio and dominic uh, made his label debut with his solo piano record Lonely Shadows in the meantime. I assume, also judging from their own music as leaders and writers, they kind of share your love for freer jazz forms. Because I read um, that you you were also inspired a lot by Bill Dixon in the ma making of this album. Yeah, that's something very special, the story about Bill Dixon, because I got some recordings of Bill from a good friend of mine many years ago. And I was so inspired about this insane uh, abilities of creating music in the space and like fully improvise. But what's very fantastic that Bill Dixon is the guy who is who was able just to play like a faultless contemplation of the space. And uh, from that point, like records as Vademecum or Vademecum Second, that yeah. two my favorite albums of Bill like uh, reminds me a bit of Black Cauldron, one of the songs of the new upcoming record. And I think it's like, I realized that, that it happened like subconsciously. It's the effect of uh, how much time I spend with his music and just mm. it at some point went me back many years later and just I realized that it's a like, kind of deep relation to his work. And I had a feeling that's something very important I just wanted to mention because I really admire this insane ability of creating yeah. music like in the space. But also what's very special about Black Cauldron is that uh, Manfred really makes it fantastic because he, he made a great job just pointing us in the space, giving us mm -hmm. like certain layers and just to like create this communication because uh, the black cauldron that's the few bars and the lines which are harmonized but yeah. at the end everything goes free and this like softness of improvisation and just the uh, moving in the space needed like really great mix and i think manfred did it fantastic yeah Staying with uh, Dixon for a second, because in preparation for this for this conversation with you, I, I also went back to some of um, some of the albums in, in his discography, and one album that particularly stood out for me in relation to your music on this album was Son of Sisyphus. Is that also mm. a, an album that 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 was part of your your phase of of of, of discovery with Bill Dixon? Any chance? Maybe. But definitely both Father Macklin's were kind of the closest more. to my okay. to my work. That's more or less uh, this vibe I was thinking about uh, composing this music. And uh, it was also like pure visualization of the landscape uh, of that place. And also it was like beautiful uh, experience just to feel this spiritual, mental, mm -hmm. Thing I found in the Vanemeyer. I think it's really interesting always to hear the influences because sometimes they can be very far apart in 
in nature, you know, just in, in, in structure from from the the new result, the music that you came up with. But then you kind of you look for what it is in the atmosphere or in the tone or in the in the lyrical qualities that are so related to Dixon, because he was yeah. one of the seminal horn players in free jazz. And I mean, the Vadim Makem discs you're speaking of are quite, you know, the nature of the music and the, the, the na nature of the interplay is definitely a little more um, more out there than it is on your record in, in, in some ways. But at the same time, I hear what you mean, how they come together and how that influence kind of um, transports over to you. Yeah. Um, that, that certainly, those albums certainly also play into how the designs of the pieces turned out so open, I would assume, on Frozen yeah, Silence. Definitely. Yeah, and I believe it's like the Frozen Silence also for me seems to be kind of like a new opening for the like a uh, future process of composition and yeah. the music I will be like sharing with my friends like mm -hmm. next year or something but also I would like to mention that because my wife she's a classical pianist classically yeah. educated and we've been also listening a lot of uh, Rachmaninoff like piano concertos and this kind of stuff and And also I can feel like for the future music, I'm going to have some also like this kind of romantic inspiration from Russian music. And he's been like an amazing composer. And uh, I have to say it's something important, which is also on the way for the future music I would like to work on. So just I'm very curious what will happen in the next two years, because I believe there's some hmm. that every artist, or like, especially me, need like a certain amount of time just to get some new ideas and just to, let's say, digest it somehow and just to feel there's a good moment to move on. And I think that's uh, the next thing which will happen uh, for me as a composer, I believe. That's something I do. Well, I can tell you that we're at least equally excited about what's to yeah. come, as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about influences, you know, Dixon, just now you mentioned Rachmaninoff, which is also, you know, <laughs> there's a, a, a big contrast. Um, I believe one can hear more than a couple of ECM-related inspirations flowing through your music here, too. Um, can you name a couple? I really love some of works like Garbarek. I love it. Some At some point, it's like the master of the sound, and that's I really love very deep. And also love some old records of uh, quartet with Dewey Redman. And also recently I had a chance to buy one of the release of Contours of some Rivers. So I also love this kind of like yeah uh, the beginning of the label and that what was happening there. It's also very inspiring just because my musicians are also very deep in the free jazz forms. So just having and sharing this The records together talking about them that also helps us just to create a sound and the understanding of the music we'll be working on because a little bit like live concerts are different than the like work in the studio so it's very important just to find a like a source what yeah. we're uh, really interested and that's what's been happening among me and guard because we've been recently checking some old tapes of ECM, mm. like a circle with Anthony Braxton. I also love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I really career, love, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really fantastic. So if you, if you have that like background in your, in your understanding where the label, like started the journey and how much it's great music there. Yeah. Uh, so then you can find the, find yourself in this, the, 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 the huge bubble of the history of this music and then just try to get some bites from this and put these things together. For sure. That's really 
really interesting to me because it's so many great records. <laughs> it's yeah. really hard to actually you know, just to mention all of them, but it's really beautiful. This we became also like naturally a part of the history. Uh, joining, joining the label. Yeah. How important, I mean, you're talking about your colleagues, your sidemen on the album, and how you exchange musical interests with them or, or talk about albums. How important is their respective charistic input in your voice in, in writing mm -hmm. the music? Are they, are they part of that process? Or does, do things change a lot when you bring them to them? I think that's what's really important uh, in, in this group is just to realize the personalities we have in the, in the band. So if you take a look like Dominic's album, Solo Work, it's almost nothing written for, for that yeah. album. And the music was like almost fully improvised. But that's what I really admire is like the way he's playing on that album. And it gives you the feeling, these are the songs, these are the compositions. And mm -hmm. that's the very special way of improvisation. I really admire that guy. If you take a look in God, uh, and he's, he's been playing many different groups, different genres, like playing Bushman Revenge, the rock band, Supersonic Orchestra, Acoustic Unity, like latest record for CM. He's played in pop bands like Susan Sanford, and he's done so much great music, and the beautiful touch, and he's a little bit different with the approach, To music I've been working on and it's a really extra thing you yeah. can add this and on top of this as a composer for me it's Ulla Morten that's the only one guy who's never released anything in the CM but his work like Trondheim Jazz Orchestra yeah and what's happening like two albums recent two albums like Happy Endings and Plastic Wave this guy is an amazing composer like creating great structures line forms like creating open free parts for the huge, mm. large ensemble. is really composing great voicing and harmony. Of course, and he's also part of the supersonic orchestra. Yeah, Exactly. And he has one of the most beautifully sounding bass player in Europe. There's a great spirit imagination, seems to be like endless. So when you have them all, there's nothing to talk about it, but just to bring their music and be ready to let them play and yeah. be ready to react on their ideas. And then it works. I mean, there are some discussions about what and when to play or how to just to create a structure, but it's very open and it might change every concert as well. Yeah. And that's really beautiful having them as a supporters, but also taking a great lesson uh, from them because they have a little bit different understanding what I what I compose I you know they didn't spend so much time with me the landscape and the region I come from that's my yeah. private feeling yeah and just it's really beautiful just to interact and deal with this and just to suddenly at the end you can find some much more interesting thing than you thought about working on yeah You, yeah. just pa you just paved the perfect segue to my next question, which is, you know, you were speaking of the landscapes and the region that you come from. Um, yeah. Landscapes, mountain ranges specifically seem to be a recurring sources of inspiration for your music. Your last album was titled Three Crowns, which is the name of a mountain summit in the south of Poland. And for Frozen Silence, you were influenced by the landscapes of the... Can you, can you pronounce the region for me? <laughs> Karkonosze. Karkonosze. Yeah, thank you. In southwestern Poland, yeah. Yeah, that's the smallest mountain in Poland. It's like very, very tiny one. It's between the Polish and Czech border. So, I mean, if you would spend like a few days that region, you would be done with everything you can find there. But it's it's really easy to experience everything in a short period of time. Yeah. But there are some beautiful, favorite spots. I was honestly... Uh, inspired and it was kind of reunion for me because I come from that place I moved 
many places uh, through the last 10 years and now I live in Warsaw and just uh, being back there, staying for long weeks, it was like uh, finally find it that it's like very special and probably one of the most beautiful uh, landscapes in Poland. So it was like reunion and kind of pure and honest contemplation of the time and the strength of uh, the silence because actually everything stopped for long weeks and uh, this tension and intensity in the air in the forest or on the hills being alone it's a very special experience uh, to me and it was kind of naturally connected to the music I was working on so yeah. sometimes musicians they have a problem because they compose something and then they just have to find the title to the music because mm. they they are not sure how to call it or where it comes from. Okay, it might be like inspiration about other artists and uh, other stuff, but I'm really proud that it was kind of like natural thing. Like, okay, this is the place I come from and I would like to dedicate this place something mm-hmm. for me. And I'm kind of happy about it, that it happened and it, it was very natural decision. Some tracks even um, are titled accordingly, which is, th- those would be Black Cauldron, High Stone, Dry Mountain. Yeah. Those are named yeah. after specific locations from there, right? Exactly. So it's like kind of dedicated to my favorite spots in that region. I was visiting very, very often during pandemic time. And yeah. the, the, on- the only one piece you can find on that record, which is kind of funny, is titled Waves of Glima, and this is the moment when the lockdowns were done, and finally we had a chance to travel around the Europe, and uh, we took a flight to south of Crete, Greece, because I've been traveling a lot there. It's like my second home, like islands in the Mediterranean Sea, and there's like small, tiny beach with beautiful mountains and the one simple Greek house, and we. We spent there like two weeks right after that. And one of the one of the songs is dedicated to this tiny small place in south of Crete. Oh nice. I have a Greek friend there and we've been traveling there the last ten years. Like at least Beautiful. once a year we had it. It's like super local stuff. No one's there. But it's very family thing. It's very basic, like tiny Greek house. But it's something very special I really love, uh, and that's why you're always traveling back there. Machi Urbara on his new and third quartet recording for ECM called Frozen Silence. Thank you for joining me in the ECM podcast. I'm Friedrich Kunzmann, and I look forward to present more new music from ECM very soon.